water. Thank you very much. It's good to see you this morning. I need my microphone. I see this. So if you bear with me for a moment, we'll be all right. I hope you're doing well. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. It's a great day to be a believer. It's a great day to be all that we can be in Jesus Christ. I hope that that's where you are today. If you're not, maybe by the time we leave today, you will be in alignment, walking with Christ. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you all? Fantastic. Excellent. Excellent. Glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. All right. <clears throat> My on okay? Well, you should take care of that folks. Bear with us. All right. Not too loud. Not too loud. Because these folks on the front row just don't know what's about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you look over the book of uh, Romans with me this morning, <clears throat> we're going to finish up this passage that we've been working on and praying through and asking God to give us wisdom, and He has been faithful to do just that, so I hope that you will be prepared this morning. Uh, prepare your heart, I hope you all have already, and in your worship so far. That should be in good shape with the Lord. We're over in Romans chapter 8. We'll start with verse 35. If you'll stand with me if you're able, we will look at God's Word together. We'll be reading through the end of the chapter from verse 35. Based on all this truth that God has laid out, <clears throat> the question comes, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long, and are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Knowing all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither present, nor the future, nor any powers, either height, neither depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thank you. Please be seated. I pray with you this morning. Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Father, that we can go to your word now in this portion of the worship service. And I know that you've been tilling hearts. You've been working hard at the soil, O oh God, of our hearts. And now it comes time to plant good seed on fertile ground. That it might grow into the fruit that you desire us to be. The love, the joy, the peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness self-control. Father, we love you. We bow before you today. Bless this time. Redeem it unto yourself, O Lord, for it is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we make our prayer. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hope you've had a good week this week. I have had a blast as usual. We've had those challenges and those things that take place, but we are sorry, gentlemen. Get it? It's okay. But I hope you've had a great week. I hope that you're um, aligning yourself with God. Because if you're not aligning yourself with God, my dear friends, in these times, uh, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? All of Europe to blow up? What are you waiting for America to blow up? Or what are you waiting for? Those days are upon us. If you hadn't noticed, those days are here. And you and I, God says He will protect His people through the problem. Through. Look at this passage. Through the angels or the demons or the height or the depth or the nakedness or the starvation or whatever. He says He'll help us through those. He didn't say He'd keep us from them. See, that's the problem that so many have in today's world, this culture, this thing called pre-trib rapture. Uh, was introduced in 1850 by a man by the name of John Darby. If 
you're here on Wednesday night, you already learned that. If you're not here on Wednesday night, you may not know what's going on just yet, but I want to encourage you, Wednesday night's the place to be. Let me tell you one thing here. We've had a little, a few situations. I hope you're enjoying the van. Now it's time to get ready and get rolling and use the van for ministry. That's why we bought it. Hallelujah. We're not going to park it out there in the parking lot and show it off and let somebody steal it. Let's hope. We're going to use that puppy and we're going to pick folks up and we're going to bring them to worship. If you're not sure about worship yet, I'm glad you're here. Because you come today to worship. That's what we're about. Worship. We all come to worship individually during the week and then corporately on Sunday. That's what we do. Some other Christian friends of ours worship on Saturday. That's okay. Paul said, whatever day of the week you plan on worshiping, you set it aside for Jesus. Amen. I'm going to cover that just for a little bit. Let me cover that just for a little bit. Number one, you folks that are concerned about not having a word up on the sign out here, can we not get concerned over the darkness thing? When we had a secretary, her name was Joyce Sellers, we had a sign that came along when she was here. Joyce and I will work on that together. Now we have lovely Cheryl Perks as our church secretary. Mr. Clary knows he's been trained on that. He's going to share with her this week. We're going to get her trained. She's inundated right now, yes? yes. You ever have a new job? Yes? yes. Amen. Yes. Good, good. I'm glad you're working in it. Good. I'm glad. But it's, it comes to a point where you just, wow, I don't know if I can take any more information. It's information overload. But that's where Cheryl is. Pray for her. She's doing a good job, and she's going to do an excellent job for Jesus. But when Cheryl gets the sign down with Randall, that's me. Everybody hear me? I love you, but it ain't you. So you can relax. We're not going to put your, hey, Joe loves Mary on the sign. Okay? Got it? Because Joe, if you ain't told Mary by now, she done forgot anyway. <laughs> so we're going to put the scripture on the sign. I'll have one up by Thanksgiving. That's Thursday, by the way. Hallelujah. I'll we'll have that up. For our sign will be back right on rocking and rolling. And we want to use that as a tool in the hands of Almighty God. Everybody okay? Not, not a, it's not a community sign. It's a Jesus at Hardy Central Baptist Church sign. Amen. Everybody all right? Yes. Okay, good, good. And number two thing, committee chairman, listen to me. Committee chairman, don't dare, don't you dare have another conflict with my Wednesday night Bible study. Are you hearing me? No, you're not hearing me. I appreciate the individual that came to me this past week said, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking. Before you start thinking, you come see me and I'll be glad to get with you. Because I'm going to tell you it's a scriptural principle. Some of you are getting all uptight right now. I hope you are uptight a little bit because I want you to hear me. Two things we do here at Hardy Central Baptist Church. Two major things. One is we worship on Sunday morning. Nothing should interfere with worship. Nothing. I don't care if it's your schedule. I don't care if it's your cartoons, your golf, your greatest things that you'll ever do for Jesus that doesn't interfere with worship on Sunday morning. I don't think you're hearing me this morning. Amen. Wednesday night, the second greatest thing we do is called Bible study. Amen. Bible study. No way on God's green earth would I ever interfere with you Sunday school teachers and your lesson. I wouldn't call a committee meeting on Thursday morning, on Wednesday night, or Sunday school time on Sunday morning. Are you listening to me this morning? I'm not mad. I'm not angry. Oh, Lord, he looks mad. No, it's just me. <laughs> it's just you. It's just me. But don't interfere again. Are you listening to me? Yes. Committee chairman, are you hearing me? Yes? Yes. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. That's not right. Is it right before the pastor? 
I'm important. Let me tell you who's not right before. Almighty God. Show me in the scriptures where Jesus teaching his disciples ever said, oh, well, we're going to go over here and we're going to tend to something else now. No. He taught the word. Don't interfere with the word of God in people's lives. I'm very careful. We've got to do something with our Sunday school building. Got to update that thing. We can't get through. We go through one class. Walking down the hall, you run into classes. What in the world? I know it's been that way since 1954. I get it. It ain't 1954 anymore. Time, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. And church family, I'm working with our deacons. I've already talked to Chairman Moore. I'm going to be working with our deacons. We need our two to five year plan back in place. So we don't get outside of what God would have us to do. And we start spending that we don't need. Everybody okay with that? All right, I said, are you okay with that? Yeah. Mom, I can hear you. Okay. If you're not okay with that, you see me. If you're not okay with any of this, you just see me and we'll take care of business. But we're not going to interrupt any more Bible study or worship because you've got X, Y, Z to do. Everybody all right with that? You know what you do? You know what I'm protecting you from? I'm protecting you from the curse of God. You think he doesn't discipline his children? And I look at it in your families and I want God's blessing in your families, but we don't have obedience yet. God's blessing comes from obedience. It's the greatest thing you can do is obey God. When you stand before Jesus, you didn't have to obey the pastor, the preacher, or whoever, but you better be obeying Jesus. And show, show me anywhere in Scripture where He would have, have you to do something else. Let me tell you what our, we suffer from, folks. Some of us are so busy, we don't know whether we're coming or coming. We got all this 9, 20, 11 things from Sunday to do, and we don't even come in worship when we come. We come and sit, and you as a member of the body of Christ, you should be here this morning participating in worship. Participating. Now be open to the Holy Spirit of God, my dear friends. Be open and let Him speak to you. This is not a, a condemning on my part. I'm encouraging you to do what is right before God. And we're going to get this thing aligned, and we're going to get it right with God. It's that simple. It's that simple, Hardy, Hardy Central. Holy Spirit in Hardy Central. I've had people come to me, and some of them have said, you know, some folks in the church are concerned you're just not taking care of some of these things we're concerned about. You come and bring it to me, and we'll take care of it the best we can. But don't worry about the sign. Got it? Everybody okay? Don't worry about Wednesday night Bible study. If you do youth study, if you do children, if you do children's worship or children's music, choir, and so forth, yeah, that's where you're supposed to be. If you're working in the kitchen, that's where you call to be, and that's what we're going to do. That's fine. But all these extra things, let me tell you, one last thing before we really get rolling, and it's this. So many of you do so many good things, you're missing God's best things. You're doing so many good things, you just are not doing the best things for God. And your life looks like it. Some of you emotionally, you look just as tattered as the day is long. You're just on edge, you're upset, you're just emotionally, and why? Why? Trust in God. He's, he's the giver of all good things. If you don't have what you want, it may be something that keeps you from God. Shocking, isn't it? But as we see here, nothing can separate us from the love of God. But Hardy Central, let me tell you one thing. We've got folks coming to visit. We've got folks that I contact. Do you understand back to Wednesday night that I work very, very, very hard during the week making contacts? Do you get it? I visit people, I call people, and I invite them to Wednesday night Bible study. Don't, don't, don't go against me, okay? Fair enough? Fair enough? Fair enough. Don't go against that. That's what God would have us to do. I don't care how many good things they are, if they die or separate from Jesus Christ, there's hell to pay. And that's going to come back to me and you. 
Oh, no, not me. It's not me. I'm saved. I got news for you. You and I as a church body are responsible for what God has given us. And God has given us a mission. It's found in um, Matthew 28. Go ye therefore into all the earth. Baptize, teaching them all things I have taught you and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We just did that. Those five folks that came this morning and given their lives or rededicated their lives to Jesus Christ, that's what it's about, my dear friends. That's what it's about. And don't think that we can't just baptize once a month or twice a month or every Sunday. Don't be thinking along those lines. What I normally do is like to collect a little bit then we can baptize four or five at one time, six, seven, eight, ten, it doesn't matter. We can move on. Efficient, right? Yes. Efficient being a good steward of our time. And I'm going to invite you, particularly if you're a leader, if you're a so-called leader in this church, guess what you're supposed to be doing? Leading. Leading. And that's by example. See, you can't sneak, I can't sneak anywhere. You got it? My mama told me when I was a boy, son, your sins will find you out. I took her seriously. I don't sneak around anywhere. I already told you, if I come visit, I'll call. And I'll come in the front door, the door that you receive folks at. I ain't going to sneak around the back. So we can't be, come to worship, oh hallelujah, and then go out and live like hell. It doesn't work that way. If God won't accept that from me. He won't accept that from you. He will not accept that from anyone. We need to understand. But nothing will separate us from, I'm not angry. <laughs> Don't be looking at me like a man. You're a man. Some of you are mad right now. That's your business. That's your business. I'm telling you the truth. The truth upsets. Hey, that means the truth has upset me many a time. You get it? Some of you are so hard hearted that God's word will never penetrate. Why? You got to open it. God's not going to come in and beat down the door. See that door right there? That's a door of your heart. There is no doorknob on Jesus' side. You get it? Some of you just don't get that. He's going to knock like a gentleman. Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He's going to knock and guess who's got to open? You. You don't open. Granny can't open it for you. I had a godly grandmother. I had a godly mother. Tough as nails. But she loved the Lord. But nobody else can separate or nobody, excuse me, can accept Jesus from me. Well, once I've accepted him, no one can separate me from his love. Nothing. Look at it. Verse 5, 35. Who, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble. You got trouble this week? Probably. You're just fallen nature. You're going to have some trouble. You got trouble. Yeah. Let me say this. Have you got any loss? Here's the biggest trouble you'll face if you're a believer. That you have lost loved ones. That's tough as nails. That's tough. That's tough to handle. How to handle is pray. Pray and continue to pray. Continue to pray for them. Pray that God puts someone in their path. Pray that God will convict their heart. That's where it starts. You know how I was up in the high school area last week. And we went through Roman, the Roman road, if you know it. If you don't, learn it. Any of us can be a witness. We are all witnesses for Him. And that's what we've got to do. How many people will come, and I say this quite a bit because the Lord lays it on me, how many people will come to heaven and be there for eternity because of your witness? You may not even know it. We don't. Maybe an encouraging word one day. Maybe one time along the way you helped somebody. Maybe you were standing in line and the poor soul in front of you, just like many of us where we've been, we're there, and the checkout lady said, it's 2215, and they don't have 15, or they don't have five, and you just help them out, and hey, here you go, God bless you, go in peace. Do you know that God's going to repay you? Do you know that God, the Word of God says He'll repay you some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold? You cannot give God. Give to Him. Help someone else out along their way. But you folks that aren't working, you need to find a job. Amen. That's tough. You go, oh, oh no, you don't get it, preacher. You just, you don't, you're not in the economy like I am. You start out as a volunteer. I ain't giving my time. Then don't expect God to give you a job. 
And I know what it says in D.C. 6, 7% unemployment, that's a lie out of the pit. That's up around 25 now as we speak. I get it. I talk to people in business all the time. We're not hiring anybody for a while. I know, I understand. You volunteer. Guess where you can volunteer? Right here. Hello. Starting a church family. Find out a group of folks around here in Verina that need your help and you give it to them. You deliver what God would have you to give. And then He will bless you. That's the way it works. Now Paul says this. You don't work, you don't eat. Man, Paul, oh, don't be telling me that this morning. I'm going to lunch. I'm going to lunch. You folks, we started at 1110. Don't rush me. Don't you rush me. We don't rush God. I know your Redskins are on. I know your Cowboys are on, or wherever they are. I know all your teams are on. My goodness gracious, I've been there. You know they got a thing called ESPN? See that replay later in the week then. How about it? I'm not going to keep you that long. Come on here. Don't look at me like that. Relax. Relax. We'll be out of here. we got a service tonight at 6. We've got to be out of here by then. <laughs> Shall trouble or hardship be facing hardship? Here's what you got to understand. Too often trouble and hardship, we brought it on ourselves. Amen. Talked to somebody this week, several somebody, as a matter of fact, and said, oh, you know, man, uh, you know, this Paris thing, well, why did God do that? I lovingly shared with the person, you're ignorant to say such a thing. You're ignorant of God's word to say such a thing. You haven't resolved in your mind and in your heart who God is. You might be saved and born again, but you haven't resolved in your mind who God is. God doesn't kill innocent people. Amen. Don't you ever forget that. God doesn't kill innocent people. Those folks that kill those people in, in Paris, God will kill every one of them if they don't come to Him. Are you listening to me this morning? You don't hear that. God's going to kill evil. Get it? God doesn't kill good. God doesn't kill people. And think about you and me. We're a work in progress. Hello? Thank God. The Word says this, if you hadn't noticed, that He who has begun a good work in you is faithful to see it to completion, fullness, maturity, to where He wants us. See, we don't have enough people in the church today surrender to Jesus. We just don't have enough folks surrender to Jesus. Remember a few weeks ago, the Lord had said to me on my way to church, tell them about their agendas. Hello? Yes. How many of you heard that one? You need to get that CD right up there out of the bird's nest and go with it. A few weeks ago, the Lord spoke a clear word to me just as I'm sitting here with you or standing with you today. He said, you tell the people at church about their agendas. And that they need to surrender their agendas to me. Well, that church, that hearty central is mine. I was there long before any of you ever came along. And I will be here long after most of you are gone. I don't think it wasn't my word, it was God's word. But what happens? What happens? When we have our own agendas, told you this before. You run ahead of God, my dear Christian, you're going to blow it up. It's going to mess up. It's not going to work. It's not joint fitly or fitly joining with Christ. It's not going to work. I want you to be fitted jointly with Jesus Christ. That's my desire for you. That you're blessed. That your children are coming to Jesus. That you're raising them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's what it's all about. We as a church body, we're here to support. What a great picture. What a great picture of these folks being baptized. That's why I ask you, family, please stand. We want to recognize you as a church family. And then church family, I have you to stand. If you're serious, don't, don't, don't stand if you're not. Don't stand because you're a deacon. Don't stand because you're a Sunday school teacher. If you're not going to stand up and or pray for these folks, don't you stand. Because you just made a covenant before God. You get it? 
Yes? yes? You just made a covenant before God that you're going to pray for Him. That's very serious before God. That's serious before God. See that little group of folks right there? That's serious stuff. That's serious before God. Are you and I willing to pray for other people? I can't tell you how many times since I've been here. Three years, that's hard to imagine. November 1, three years, that's hard to imagine. When we've been together as pastor and people, and I've heard you say things like, oh my gosh, the least I can do is pray. And I'll stay and I'll love you, Luke, correct? That's wrong. That's wrong. The best thing you could ever do for somebody, what you're doing in your prayer time, is you're offering them before the throne of God Almighty. We get that? This passage just above it, if you've read this passage, you know that Jesus is ever interceding for us. He's ever interceding. He's there right now interceding for you because the word is said, and if you're lost here today, he's interceding for you that you'll come to know now. If you're a believer today, he's interceding for you, and I'll tell you his prayer this morning. Father, help them align with me. Amen. Help them get aligned with my word, oh God. Tell them to put their foolishness down, all their foolishness and pride down, and come humbly follow me. My dear friends, that's the way it is. Whether I like it, you like it, the Bobs like it, the Joes, the Marys, whoever like it, don't like it, it don't change the truth. How many of us have ever believed ignorantly? Me? Me? It's about six or seven. I'm the rest of the line. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you believe in untruth, guess what? It doesn't change the truth. You can believe all day long ignorantly or your old world and if it doesn't line up with God's Word, you're in error. I told you about the fellow I had a couple weeks ago. I won't bore you with any more details. Comes tells me that I'm just a, I forgot what he called me, but anyway, it wasn't, wasn't a profane or anything. But if I were a lost fellow, I'd have probably helped him to the floor. But it's a different day. Different day, different age. I'm a different man now. I'm a different creature in Christ. Well, trying to tell me that Jesus wasn't a Jew. I said, he won't white like you either. <laughs> and that red hair and blue eyes, I said, Jesus doesn't look like you in the flesh. See, what this man's major problem is, his God has made in his image. You with me there? When our God has created you and I in his image. You red-haired, blue-eyed folks don't leave out there and go, man, they got much of all over. And I didn't say anything about you. I said, this gentleman, he thinks he's, uh, his God's created his image. No. No. Know who you are. Know who God is. And we'll know who's different. He's God. We're not. All right, let's go down here real quick. Like, knowing all things in verse 37. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. My dear friends, if you haven't heard a thing today, that's the best news you're going to hear. That's the best news you're going to hear. Best news you're going to hear today Best news you're going to hear this week. Best news you're going to hear in your lifetime. And the ball's in your court. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Ball's in your court. I had a request from one of our folks who comes on a somewhat regular basis on Wednesday night. We got shocked this past week. Some of us. It's all good. In Revelation 20, where God allows Satan out of the pit for one small, short season. That's the truth. Hey, it's okay. I remember praying about that for a long time. Lord, why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense. 
And the Lord said to me what I need to say to you this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. So many of us are so reliant on our common sense. Your common sense next to faith, faith needs to win. And if you don't step out by faith today, when? If you don't step out by faith today, when are you? If you're a younger person in your 40s or in your 50s or 60s or 70s, when are you going to do it? See, Paul said this to Agrippa. Today's the day. Today's the day of salvation. God wants you to come unto himself with that word. Say it's going to be loosed. We're going to rule and reign with Jesus for a thousand years. Some would say, oh no, you don't get that. That's, that's an allegory. You are dead slap wrong. And I invite you to come talk to me. I'll be glad to listen. Dead slap wrong. See, if that's an allegory, so is John 3.16. So is John 3.16. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever should perish, or whosoever should believe, excuse me, thank you, believeth on Him should not perish. That everlasting life. That's what God has come to give you. That's what I, my dear friends, want for you. I want your life. I want your living life like God intended you to live. Start trusting Him. Step back and let Him be the one who guides. You be the one who follows. And you'll have a blessed life. Amen. Let me share with you, you folks who will continue to do your own agenda. And I'm going to close with this. You continue to do your own agenda, leader of the party Central Baptist Church, and we have problems. There will be conflict. But sin always brings conflict. Disobedience always brings conflict. When you step out of God's world or God's will, rather, you're looking for conflict. Let me share it with you. It goes beyond that. You're going to have conflict in your home. My thing is this. The most important thing to me in this life, my wife and three children, I'll see them on the other side. Most important. My second most important is very close to it. I'm going to see you and your children on the other side. And if you're sitting here this morning and you've got a meeting on for the pastor, I may not be seeing you on the other side. See, that's what agape is all about. That agape tells you the truth whether you want to hear it or not. See? I've been called to a higher power. His name is Jesus. Amen. I'm going to honor him. Got to do it. And guess what? You're going to be required, if you're a believer, to honor him as well. Amen. Hey, no lone rangers. We do this thing together. You want peace in your family? You want to see your children and grandchildren come to Jesus? You put down your agendas today and you align yourself biblically with God's word. God's will, and you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. And please come and share that with us. Let us know when you see that blessing. A little loop coming into the world. Of five folks being baptized here. Of people being healed as we pray for people. Families being put back together on the right path. You want, to, you want to see your family doing it? Put your agenda down. Put your agenda down. There's nothing more important than His agenda. We bless you when you do. Let us pray. Father, I thank you today. Thank you for your love and mercy and grace. Covers even a wretch like me, which is the word says. That's what that great song says. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound it covers you and down like me. Touch your hearts today, Lord. There are people here that are lost, that are just lost, don't even know what's going down or coming down. Father, you're the answer. And you gave the answer in the form of your Son, Jesus. 
and the gospel of God has been shared. Your word has been shared this morning. And every time we hear the name of Jesus, we are up to a decision. A decision needs to be made. Whether I'm going to obey you or whether I'm going to reject you today. For the Christian here today, oh God, you have set Hardy Central aside back in 1890, oh God. You have a vision for this church. You have a purpose for this church being here. It is for being a lighthouse. I proclaim a lighthouse today. You are a lighthouse, Hardy Central. And you have been called by God Almighty to share the love of Jesus. His Jesus. His sacrifice. His cross. That others might want to come and get to know Him. You and I have been called, church. We can't do it without Him. But with Him we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But Father, we love you today and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.